Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the jungles of Maui. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. No riding in the mud, no crashing in the mud, no helping each other out of the mud, none of that. Because today's video is simply going to be a walk around of my 2008 Yamaha WR250R dual sport motorcycle. Watch out! Okay, what was that, Kalani? And when I say Kalani, I'm talking to you, me. Huh? Wait, I guess let's start by talking about this bike off the showroom floor. Off the showroom floor, it's approximately $5,200 and it's uh, street legal, right off the showroom floor. Um, it comes in at about 297 pounds, wet. So that's with all your fluids, full tank of gas, ready to roll. It's uh, 250 cc's off the showroom floor. Uh, six speed, gets approximately 72 miles per gallon and is reliable as hell. So off the showroom floor, this bike is both fuel injected and comes with electric start. But as you can see, does not have a kicker at all. And I would say that's the kicker, but there is no kicker. It's cool without a kicker. And we're just kicking it. So I actually drained the battery once on a ride with Mr. Jason and Mr. Robert. And I left my headlight on. We took a break for about an hour or so. And when I tried to start the bike, it was completely dead. Um, and I was like, oh crap, this is bad news because what I've read on forums is that if the bike doesn't have enough power to turn the fuel injection on, you're toast. I was like, great, that's just terrific. Well, let's try jump starting it anyways. I mean, it was dead, dead. The lights wouldn't even come on, nothing, the, the, the little dash cluster. So we did a little push, just a small push on a really easy grade hill, popped it in first and it just started right up. No problems whatsoever. So not having the kicker on the bike, don't really care. Who cares? Not a problem. So if you have the budget and you're looking for a dual sport, you're looking for something that's highly, highly reliable and highly, highly fun to ride, just stop this video right now. Just go ahead and get one because they're fun. All right, let's talk about the modifications, ladies and gentlemen. Let's face it. I think it's probably safe for me to say that everybody has the same problem I have, whereby you're like, oh, cool, a dual sport motorcycle. I'm just gonna buy it and ride it. Nah, maybe I'll put some bars on it, but eh, that's, that's about it, just maybe some bars. And like maybe a little shifter or something and some little, like just, okay, just an exhaust and I'll be fine, it's, it'll, it's cool. Oh wow, they make this nice little header thing for, I'll just get one of those and then, okay, yeah, I'll take one of those. And uh, they, yeah, the brakes are a little, yeah, oh, the, wow, steel braided brake line, okay. Yeah, I'll take that too. And then like $12,000 later, you're like, whoa, I just spent three times as much money as the damn motorcycle cost in the first place. Anyways, I digress. I hardly know where to start here with these mods, so let's just start from the ground up. Let's start with the rubber. It's where the rubber meets the road. Um, on the bike right now, well, as you can see, these tires are about ready to be changed. The tread, the tread is like getting down there, but uh, they're still fine. We've got the Michelin T63s, and a few videos back, I was really talking trash about these tires. I had just put them on. The front tire was having a really hard time seating properly. I took them on this like really leafy trail and they're sliding all over the place and I was just kind of over it. But I have to say they're kind of growing on me. They're pretty decent on the road. The front tire definitely wears better than the, my other tire of choice which is the um, Pirelli Rallycross MT21s. Those are 
really good tires, but the front tire doesn't wear very well on them. So we got the Michelin T63s, front and back, great on the road. Um, pretty decent off-road, they're pretty good. I've noticed that I've had to air them down a little more than the Pirellis, but whatever, it's all good. Um, they're inexpensive tires, if you guys are in the States, like, gosh, you guys can get the tires for like 50, 60 bucks. Free shipping, lucky bastards. Second item on the list of mods is the Super Sprocks Sprocket and Chain Combo. Ah, uh, not nearly as good as something like Renthal or whatever, but I just ordered them. Uh, I just ordered it because it was like a chain and sprocket kit. And it was a 47 tooth, which is what I was looking for, versus the stock 43. Um, if you go up on the tooth count on the back of the bike, it'll shorten the gears a little, which means the bike will have a little more pep versus whatever it was at stock. And I guess the consensus on the forums is that Yamaha put a 43 tooth sprocket in the back so they could pass this sound check thing in California. So the bike was, you know, passing a certain marker at a certain speed, make or creating a certain level of sound. And if they were to put like a sprocket like this, which is what I think the bike should have come with stock, it would have been too loud. I don't know, that's, could be all hearsay. Anyways, moving on. While we're back here, let's, um, <laughs> that's what he said. Uh, the, and what's cool about them is, as you can see this little, this little offset here is like, you know, about a half an inch hitting it that way. And the stock configuration was much like this side, like it was just, you know, kind of went around. And what sucked about that is, you know, when your tire tread starts going down, you got to start kicking your tire back more to keep your chain tension at, in the right space and this bolt starts going so far out and it just kind of gets squirrely you know it's this bolt only goes in about this far so it, it just gets a little wonky and this makes tightening the chain and adjusting it much faster it's like really easy to do with this I don't even put the bike up like I just break this bolt break these and <laughs> just do it on the ground it's really nice let's talk about the brake lines these brake lines are by a company called hell I'll link everything down below all the stuff I talk about I'll just throw a bunch of links in the crankcase um, these are steel braided brake lines and there's not much to say about them they're 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 uh, built really well and they're you know they're solid and they improve braking response so got those on the back and the front here hell not the eternal place of damnation but hell with one L which is just like heaven because you can stop the bike very easily um, and they come you know configured exactly for your bike you can customize your brake line color the nipple color or all this stuff is like customizable which is whatever it's cool yeah we've got these simple little mods uh, wider foot pegs the stock ones are just two rows of grip and just kind of nothing in the middle and it's much narrower so these these are great I mean they they're definitely they definitely help with like fatigue oh look at that that thing's hitting there um, then we've got a mini rolling by in the jungle followed by a driven shifter this thing is great you guys I don't know if you've seen the video again a couple of videos back the one I was talking smack about the Michelin um, T63s. Maybe I'll just put a link right here on this. Yeah, I'll put a link right there. Okay, did I do that yet? I probably did it by now, but I just don't know because I don't. I never know what the future me is gonna do. So there's that video. But I I ran into a tree, or just a little shrub, you know, and it freaking bent this shifter all the way back. I don't know if you can see. Can you see all that fatigue right there? great shifter it didn't snap off it's a winner in my book in fact I, that reminds me I need to order another one okay now I want to talk about this right here this is where the helmet lock used to be and this is my new helmet lock because in swinging my leg over I've slammed my knee into this block of aluminum so many times that it just had to go and it's been replaced by this simple little four digit thing 
If you guys can figure it out, post it in the comments below. But no more than five guesses. If somebody gets the proper code here, four digits, I'll send you a pineapple. I'm not going to say who got it, but if I see who got it, I'll send them a private message. Then they can fly to Maui and steal my helmet. That would be expensive. All right, let's talk about the exhaust here. <laughs> like that? Exhaust reveal. Okay, coming off the engine, we've got a FMF. This is the, what is it called? The Mega Bomb header. It kind of looks like a little two-stroke expansion chamber, but it's not. It's just a little Mega Bomb. And this, this little piece right here is actually supposed to help quiet the whole system by a few decibels. Um, as well as give it a little more, give it a little more oomph, which it seems to have done pretty nicely. One problem with it I've noticed is the, uh, right here, actually it's not that much big of a problem because it was my fault, <laughs> but when I fell in the water on mud porn, put a link for mud porn right here. Boop, 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 boop. See this finger gesture? So appropriate too for linking up mud porn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> When this thing fell in the water, it actually cracked that weld there. So there's a small little hairline crack on it, just I guess cooling it too fast. This is the Yoshimura RS2 exhaust. Starts right here, bolts on right there and right there. Simple installation. It right here is where the stock um, exhaust had a uh, an oxygen sensor so you scratch that and what happens is you have to plug this little actually you can't even see it but it's it's in there you have to plug this little relay in. well it's not like a relay it's like a little circuit or something that tells the computer you know the the uh, the oxygen sensor is you know don't worry about it so it keeps the engine light from tripping tripping out and as you do that, you also remove, this is just another simple mod, but you remove all this California emission junk up here and you cut a hole in your air box, which is under the seat. And that also helps her breathe a little better. We've got DRC radiator hoses and these, this is like the best modification on the bike. It makes the bike go so fast. Okay, let's talk about the brake light which seems to be flickering right now, but it's not flickering in real life. So just know that in real life, it's a solid, solid red, beautiful glow. <laughs> so this is the DRC taillight kit by Edge, and it comes with all kinds of little configurations and whatnot, but I've minimized it down to the most simple thing in the universe, which is this housing with a different company's internal LEDs. So the internal LEDs are by a company called 12 O'Clock Labs. And let me just show you what it does if I can reach my foot around here. So we've got, upon braking, we've got a nice little flash to solid. Oh, now it's solid, weird. And then we've got blinker, which is right blinker. left blinker. You can also change the blink pattern. Well, here, let me give you an, let me give you an. All right, so here's an example of one of the brake light patterns, one of the more sort of fancier ones or whatever. But so you can set it to that brake light pattern where you got half the thing flowing. You can set it so the whole thing flows across in the direction you're turning. Um, I prefer to just keep it on flash. So you can set it to either flash to match your front, flash really fast, or flash pretty slow quick body mods. The only body mods that I've done, black side plastics, black front plastics, and chop this fender if you can see this. Well, those of you that have uh, WRs will notice the difference here. You can see a pretty substantial difference on the chop. And if you're going to chop yours, that line right there, start at the base of that, and just go to about, you know, it's, I think it was three and a half inches from that tip. Three and a half, four inches, and just get the tips to match. Um, cut it with like a sawzall or something, and then you can sand it to round the edges, and it'll, it'll, uh, you know, it'll just look like it was always supposed to be that way. 
All right, let's talk about these hand guards by Highway Dirt Bikes. Very cool company, small company, um, but they're just awesome. If you guys buy hand guards from these guys, Paul, um, one of the owners I think he is, I don't know, I've never met him or anything, but I just asked him, I was like, hey man, can you um, punch a few quarter 20 threaded holes in it? And he's like, yeah man, no problem. So he did that. Now I can like thread things in, you know, put a little tripod or whatever. So it's, it's pretty, functional and these things are just great these hand guards are awesome um, so that the kit comes with this top part of the perch you can install like you know 12 volt, volt buttons and whatever you want to do here if you've got like heated grips or whatever it, it's very functional up here so it comes with this top perch comes with these risers uh, comes with this you know this whole configuration here mirrors are built in and they swing out. I've got duct tape on them right now. We'll talk about that later. But the uh, kit, he sends them to you with an extra set of plastics in you know white or another set of black. Um, the bar ends have to be tapped. So he sends you a tap. You actually tap the whole bar. You know, you crank a tap in there and you back it out, and it's a full threaded unit. So this this is not connected to like a spreader this is connect this is a bolt that threads into the bar solid solid as hell um, I've actually replaced this one because I jacked up the old one too much it's usually it is a little Allen head but uh, awesome hand guards you know keep your clutch perch and your brake assembly safe one of my most recent and favorite mods to date is this clutch by a company called Righteous. And this is all they make. They just make, st this is actually a stunt clutch for like stunt bikes. But oh my gosh, this clutch is freaking awesome. It's machined to absolute perfection. You know, the tolerances, everything's just perfect. It's got kind of like this satiny feel to it, and a blue anodized and it's just buttery smooth and one of the reasons for that is because instead of a regular mechanical bearing in here it's got what's called dry lin and i don't know if you guys are familiar with it or not but it's like this industrial plastic used in all kinds of different uh, applications that replace bearings and it's so smooth and it's just it's just great in Hawaii stuff like this gets gunked up and the salt air you know attacks it pretty quickly uh, not the cheapest little item it was about a hundred bucks which is kind of spendy you know for a little clutch mod but every time you pull it you smile because it's just wait that didn't sound right handlebars <laughs> Pastrana MX low version uh, there's nothing much to say about them. They're freaking awesome. They, what's different about these handlebars over the stock bars is they have a little bit of flex. I mean, it's almost, you almost don't notice it, but I can remember what the stock handlebars felt like. And, you know, when you hit some kind of little ridge or rock or whatever, it translates through the handlebars. And these just have that, it's a tiny little minuscule amount of flex, and it just, it just, I don't know, it makes the ride feel a lot better. Um, so, got those. Those are by Pro Taper. Great handlebars. They're oversized. And Highway Dirt Bikes will make the, uh, you know, this upper clamp and lower part for oversized or standard size bars, just so you guys know. Mm, you know, Pro Taper soft grips here. Love them. Little, little blister busters. For those times that I'm not riding with gloves, but I think we all know that I don't ever do that. Uh, same thing here, what do we got here? Oh, a little, this, this does nothing, but it looks cool. Got a little air pump here, this thing is great. Just on there like that, like so. Little air tool, it's been in the water, it's been in the rain, it's been, it's done just about everything. And it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. It'll pump the tire up from a f flat state in about a minute. And it'll pump up to 120 PSI, which is much more than you'll ever need. How close can I get it to the lens? Oh, that's sketchy. 
All right, little Zeta gas cap. Nothing too fancy here, but very functional. I mean, when you stop the bike with the stock cap on, you gotta take the key out, you gotta take the cap off and do all that stuff. Now it's just a little, you know, it's more like an MX bike. Ooh, got gas, yeah. So this is cool, it's, it just makes life a lot easier. These little things have functions, small little mini bungee cords, because this is like my dashboard right here. So if I like grab a sandwich, whatever, it might need a little <laughs> strap down, so that's where these come into play. Oh, almost forgot about you here, little buddy. Okay, we've got an Evo Tech skid plate here. Can you guys even see it? I don't know. Um, simple little mod. I didn't want to get one of those huge wraparound skid plates, although they're probably more functional. This one just fits into the stock space there. Held on by four 8mm bolts. Great little mod. Doesn't rattle, doesn't make any noise, doesn't vibrate. Highly recommend them. It's a company in the UK. Fast shipping, they were rad. So I'm looking at the bike and I'm trying to go over it, asking myself if I missed anything before I talk about my favorite mod of all. And I don't think I missed anything. So I think it's time for you guys to meet Athena. By far the coolest smile bending mod this bike has received to date. Taking it from the stock 250cc cylinder head to a 290cc cylinder. That's the mod right there. And it comes with everything that you need to get the bike rocking and rolling. And it's just great. I mean, the build quality, the craftsmanship, which <laughs> both mean the same thing, are fantastic. It went on without a hitch and started up without a doubt and it's just, I've, you know, put only a couple of thousand, well not even, about a thousand miles on it. Wait, not even a thousand miles because I haven't changed my oil yet. I put about 800 miles on it and it's just been great. So the bike used to need a second gear clutch pop to get that front tire up in the air. Now it's just a roll of the throttle lifts up in second and what's even better is you can do third gear clutch pops to get you you know get up and start doing a wheelie which i've been trying to learn how to do more of lately <laughs> oh oh gosh i almost forgot one more mod it's in here you can't see it but it's the uh dino jet power commander 3 usb great little unit um allows you to slap on your own custom maps and you can really dial the thing so it's got a pretty decent fuel map on it right now. It, I feel like it could be tuned a little more, but uh, yeah, that's about it. 2008 WR250R, you're gonna get one. Oh my gosh, step into my office, Kalani. You are fired. I almost just left you guys hanging high and dry <laughs> without even starting her up. That would have just been stupid. So here we go. Oh yeah. Listen to the 2008 WR250R singing a sweet song. She's look at look at her response. She's she responds. She doesn't have any Oh, there's a little so there's a little hiccup in there. She could use a little loving, but woo-wee! All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video.